So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we'll be doing the AQA AS Maths Pass paper of May 2021, paper 2, section B, which is the statistics section. And as always I'll include a question breakdown so you can see which topic refers to which question to make your revision that little bit easier. So let's get straight into this section B of the May 2021 AS Maths paper 2. So looking at question 12, it says the table below shows the total monthly rainfall in millimetres in England and Wales in a sample of six years. The sample of six years was taken from the data set covering every year from 1768 to 2018. And it says deduce the sampling method most likely to have been used to collect this sample. Circle your answer. So the one that we want, because it's so regular and it's at the same time in every year in and particularly years that it's collected, the answer that we're looking for is going to be systematic. Now moving on to question 13, it says the diagram below shows the probability distribution for a discrete random variable y. And it says find the probability that y is between 0 and inclusive of 3. So for this what we need to do is basically include the numbers from 1, 2 and 3. So if we look at the probabilities of each of those, so this one for 1 is going to be at 0.18. The one for 2 is at 0.14 and the probability of a 3 is 0.326. So then from this all we then need to do is just add those numbers up. So 0.18 plus 0.14 plus 0.26, add them all up and it gives us 0.58 which is our third option. Then moving on to question 14, it says the random variable t follows a binomial distribution where the sample size is 16 and the probability of success is 0.3. The mean is, uh, of t is denoted by mu. Find the probability that t is less or equal to mu. Well, mu is basically the mean. And so we first need to work out the mean by using the formula of NP. So that's going to be 16 times 0.3, which gives us an answer of 4.8. So what I'm then working with is working out the probability of it being less or equal to 4.8. Now because it's going to be whole numbers, this is basically going to equal the probability of x being less or equal to 4. So then me just typing that into my calculator, I get 0 0.4499. And again, enter this on the calculator, you just need to go to B or menu, then statistic, uh, then distribution rather. Then go to B, C, D, and then we're entering the values of N equals 16, P equals 0 0.3, and X equals 4. Then for 14B, it says find the variance of T. Well, the variance, the formula for this is N, P, Q, where Q equals 1 minus P. So then substitute those numbers and then get 16 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 and it gives me an answer of 3.36. Then moving on to question 15, it says the number of hours of sunshine and daily maximum temperature were recorded over a nine day period in June at an English seaside town. A scatter diagram represents the recorded data is shown below. And one of the points of the scatter diagram is an error. Write down the letter that identifies this point well, the one that we need to highlight is F because that one's away from all the crowd. I don't know why they've given you three lines of working out, but the answer then is going to be F. It then says suggest one possible action that could be taken to deal with this error. And basically what you want to do or want to say is that you want to remove this point from the data set. So something along those lines of basically removing it, taking it out, assassinating it, it's entirely up to you. Maybe not use that last one. Then for 15b, it says it is claimed that the scatter diagram proves that longer hours of sunshine cause higher maximum daily temperatures. Comment on the validity of this claim. So again, there's a number of things you could say in terms of just because it's long hours of sunshine doesn't mean that the temperature is going to be high. So something along those lines, I think on the on the official mark scheme, one of the common or the sort of template answer they wrote is that it's invalid as correlation 
does not oh don't know my s is gone a bit astray does not imply causality so something along those lines would be fine for that one mark then moving on to question 16 it says the analysis was carried out using a large data set to compare the co2 emissions in grams per kilometer from 2002 to 2016 the summary statistics of the co2 emissions x for all cars registered by as owned by either females or males is given in the table below and the question for part A says, find the reduction in the mean of the CO2 emissions from 2016 compared to the mean of the CO2 emissions in 2002. So for this, what we want to do is we want to work out the mean. And how we do that is just going to be sigma x over n. So in 2002, the mean is equal to 207901 divided by 1215 which gives me an answer of 171. Then for 2016, the mean is equal to 142103 over 1144, which gives me a mean of 124. So then the reduction is going to be 171 minus 124, which gives me an answer of 47. Then for 16b, it says it is claimed that the move to more electric and gas petrol powered cars is caused the reduction in the mean CO2 emissions found in part A. Use your knowledge of the C of the large data set. State whether you agree with this claim. Give your answer for your reason. So again, a number of possible answers you can give, but I would say that there are very little a few cars of these types in the large data set in 2016 so they alone cannot have caused the reduction in CO2 emissions. So something along those lines would be fine for the single mark. Then moving on to 16C, it says there are 3,827 data values in the large data set. It is claimed that the data in the table above must be summarized incorrectly. Explain why this claim is being made. So it's basically because one, two, one, five plus one, one, four, four equals two, three, five, nine, not three thousand eight hundred and twenty seven. That's basically why. And it says, says, state whether this claim is correct. Give your reason for your answer. And you could say that the claim is incorrect as the large data set also has company car as a category. So something along those lines would be fine. Then moving on to question 17, it says the number of toilets in each of a random sample of 200 properties from a town was recorded. Four types of the property were included is terraced, semi-detached, detached and apartment. The data is summarized in the table below and it says one of the properties is selected at random. A is the event that the property has exactly two toilets and B is the probability that, sorry, the event that the property is detached. And for part A, I, it says find the probability of A. Well, the probability of A is the event that the property has exact two toilets. So I'm looking for anything in that green column so if i add the numbers in the green columns so that's 10 plus 50 plus 10 plus 30 and that adds up to 100 we have that over 200 giving me my final answer of 0.5 or a half 
It then says find the probability of not A and B. Well, not A and B. Well, not A is, I just highlight this. So not A is this pink section. And B is the event that probability is attached is these ones here. So if I just eliminate that yellow, because it can be a little bit confusing. So the probability of not A and B are the bits that shaded in twice. So the bits that shaded in twice is this one and this one. So that's going to be 20 out of 200, which if I simplify gives me 1 tenth or 0 0.1. So any of those two would be fine. Then for part 17 AII, it says find the probability of A or B. So if I go back to my table, and I want the probability of A or B. So the probability of A, which I'll, I'll use yellow again. So probability of A is this here. And the probability of B, which I'll use in pink, is this here. So what I'm wanting is, if I just do my A, I, I. And so here is going to be the probability of A or B is going to be equal to 10. I want all the bits that shaded. So 10 plus 50 plus 10 plus 30 plus 12 plus 8, which comes up to an answer of 120. So it's going to equal 120 over 200, which simplifies to give me 0 0.6 or 3 fifths. So any of those two would be fine. Then for 17b, it says determine whether events A and B are independent. Fully justify your answer. Well, if independent, then probability of A times the probability of B equals the probability of A and B. Now, the probability of A and B is, if we go back to the diagram is the bit that's shaded in twice, which is 10 out of 200. What do I wrote 100 for? Over 200, which when I type into my calculator is 1 over 20. So if I then work out the probability of A, which is 0.5, and the probability of B, which is 30 out of 200, then the probability of A times the probability of B equals 0 0.5 times 30 over 200, which equals 30 over 40. So as 3 over 40 does not equal 1 over 20, A and B are not independent. Then for 17C, it says use the table to write down two events other than event A and B, which are mutually exclusive. Now, again, a couple of things you want to give here. So basically, you can give any two headings from a type of house. So that'll give you two. So basically, just pick a house can't be semi-detached and an apartment. So any of the any two columns from these you could also go for or any two number of toilets so for example um, a house with two toilets or a place with three toilets you can't have both so that would be one or you could say and there was one column that had zero which was an apartment with three toilets so you could also say an apartment and three toilets. And there we go. Then moving on to question 18, it says that it is known from previous data that 40% of visitors to a particular cookery website are under 30 years of age. To encourage more visitors under 30 years of age, a large advertising campaign took place to target this age group. To test whether the campaign was effective, a sample of 60 visitors to the website 
was selected, it found that 15 of the visitors were th under 30 years of age. Explain why one tail test hypothesis test is should be used to decide whether the sample provides evidence that the campaign is effective. So for this, all we need to write is something along the lines of that if the campaign works, then the number of under 30 year old people will increase, not change. So a one tail test is appropriate. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine. Then moving on to 18B, it says carry out a hypothesis test at 5% SIG level to investigate whether the sample provides evidence that the proportion of visitors under 30 years of age has increased. So first of all, let's set up our hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is that the probability is equal to 0.14. And the alternate hypothesis is that the probability has increased beyond that 14%. Now we're dealing with a binomial distribution in which we've got a sample size of 60 and the probability of that success being 0.14. We're looking at a one tail test and a 5% SIG level. So then to work out the test statistic, we're going to find the probability that X is greater or equal to 15. Now that is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less or equal to 14. So then using the calculator, going on to menu, distribution, then going to b, c, d, our n is 60, our p is 0.14, and our x is 14. And typing that into my calculator, get an answer of 0.98351 and take that away from 1 and I get 0.01649. So then all that's left for me to do is then write my conclusion. So the conclusion is as 0.01649 is less than 0.05. We reject the HO or accept H1, and that evidence suggests at a 5% SIG level that the campaign worked. And there we go. Then the last thing we need to then state is state one necessary assumption about the sample for the distribution used in part B uh, is to be valid that the sample needs to be a random sample. And there we go.